It's pretty amazing to know that we sailed our own boat to a popular cruising destination. But our experience out here on the water is far different than those of vacationers. What is it? No, no. From cooking a simple meal. Good, if you guys could smell this. Or just getting around, boat life certainly throws a few extra obstacles our way. Oven started smoking, didn't it? Damn near caught fire. We're Steph and Travis, Canadians who didn't know much about sailing. We didn't let that or a global pandemic stop us from living our dreams, and we've been winging it ever since. We took off from Toronto and made it to Grenada in year one, and we've got no plans on stopping. Subscribe to join our life on the water. Thanks to our patrons who keep the dream going. Welcome back, guys. This week, we're heading from the French side of St. Martin over to the Dutch side to explore its capital and where the cruise port is. If you've ever been on the boardwalk in Philipsburg on a cruise before, you'll probably notice a bit of a difference nowadays. Uh, we think we found a bus stop. Looks like one. <laughs> yeah, just wait and see if a bus comes and then we'll ask. We don't know. Just got off the bus. I think Good. we're somewhere we need to be. Yeah, I think that was about 20 minutes and we just got stopped a few roads back from the beach. Yeah. I don't mind taking the bus. I like it because we get to see a lot of places that we would have not walked to really, kind of too far. The culture on the Dutch side is a mix of African, European, and North American influences. English is the main language of communication on this side, and the currency used is the US dollar or the Netherlands Antillean guilder. The euro, which is predominantly used on the French side of the island, is widely accepted as well. Hey, it reminds me of St. Augustine. This is so cool. It's super pretty. We see one cruise ship out there, but there's not that many people because the cruise ships aren't even operating to full capacity, right? So I think somebody told us they were on a cruise ship and it only had 500 out of 5,000 people. Yeah, that's heard that a couple times, like only 500 people out of 5,000. That's two crew per guest, so that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's what that lady was saying. Huh. Well, it's pretty dead on the boardwalk here, but I remember the last time when I came here on a cruise, it was packed. I don't mind it like this. Yeah, you get to see it a little bit more on the down low, but there's there's people walking around, so it's not dead dead, which is nice. Where are we, Pigeon? You know where we are. Oh, we're almost there. The northern part of the island is the French side, and the southern 40% of the island is the Dutch side. And there's the boardwalk in Philipsburg, where we are now. Well, the one thing here, the anchorage is much calmer than where we are. <laughs> and the water looks a lot nicer. Yeah, water looks nice. Well, the water's nice where we are, it's just murky. It just needs to be calm. We're in the touristy section where all the duty-free shopping is. Sunglasses, jewelry, All alcohol. good stuff. <laughs> this is Front Street, which is the most popular street for shopping on the island. Are we eating good tonight? Yeah, we might be. Whoa, 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 what is that? What? Huh. We totally thought that we'd be eating out of the water more, but 
all throughout the Caribbean, I think, with the exception of the Bahamas and Barbados, non-residents aren't allowed to spearfish. And even regular fishing, I think trolling off the boat is okay in most places. They're not really picky about that. But you're not even allowed to fish as a tourist unless if you get a fishing permit. And the difficulty in getting a fishing permit, I mean, by the time you apply for one, if you even get a response, you're probably not even going to be in that country anymore. So most cruisers, at least, don't apply for fishing permits. And that includes pole spears or like a Hawaiian sling. We're definitely in for a treat. Once we found a decent selection of meat at the grocery store here in St. Martin. We caught it. <laughs> yeah, we caught it. But yeah, when we found good meat at the grocery store, we definitely had to jump on that. And it wasn't super expensive for beef either. It was actually relatively cheap or normal prices. We had to get it because we definitely don't eat very much red meat. Um, we should just eat chicken. I understand why a lot of cruisers that we meet are either vegetarian or just don't eat a lot of meat. It's just hard to find. It's expensive. Yeah. Could you ever be a vegetarian? <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you ever be able to, I guess, limit the amount of meat you eat and like and replace it with beans or? I've tried. This doesn't work. Not a tofurkey sort of man. I have cut down quite a bit on my red meat consumption, but that's why we eat a lot of chicken. Rub it with your hands. Get get in there. Get dirty. Throwing in some carrots, onions, garlic, and we'll do potatoes on the side. So not everything tastes the same because you put it on the pot, it kind of all has that flavor. Perfect. It's done. That's all you gotta do to have a perfect roast. But that's all you gotta do, just slice it, eat it. I have. It's so hard. It might be a little tough. It's chuck roast, so it's not gonna be melt in your mouth until you actually slow cook it or pressure cook it. No Wagyu beef is what you're saying? Definitely not. Like we also found this instant Yorkshire pudding package when we were in Antigua. We tried it out and it was really good and it's one of those things where we'll find something at the grocery store and it'll be really good and we only got one and it's probably long gone. We're never going to see it again in the other islands or we'll get something and we'll stock up on it and it ends up being no good. So we kind of learned and we'll just try, we we'll usually just get one of everything, try it out and if we really like it and we're still there, We'll go and stock up. And with this meal, I think it would go really well. So I'm going to try to make it from scratch. I think it's pretty simple anyway. Just flour, egg, milk, oil. So let's see how that goes. Ooh, yeah, that smells good. Good if you guys could smell this. Mm, yummy. So although we are able to top up our power pretty well every day, we are still going to run the generator just because the Instant Pot that we have, how much did you say it takes? Because it draws 110 amps, we are going to turn on the generator just because we have it. And uh, we'd rather use a little bit of gasoline in our generator than to run down our house batteries. We do not like to turn on the generator just to be, I guess, courteous of others in the anchorage, but there's really nobody behind us, which is great. And the sun hasn't set yet, so I think it's okay that we're turning on the generator. I know some people don't like those little portable generators because they can be loud depending on which way the wind blows, but such is cruising life. But we don't have anybody around us um, in this anchorage, particularly there's no one behind us, so I think we're okay. And then I guess while that's going, I'm going to make our mashed potatoes and attempt the Yorkshire pudding. Oh, the beauty. Way too much oil. Oven started smoking, didn't it? Damn near caught fire. <laughs> Two 
too much oil. So you go just fill her up. We got extra batteries. Fill her up. Yeah, we forget we live on a rocky boat sometimes. Yeah, the oil started to spew over the sides, and then we saw some smoke. So we just killed the propane and took it out. Next time, we'll just have to make smaller ones with less oil. Yeah. Like, I don't know how much oil to put, just fill whole thing. doesn't look like it, but I still eat it. It's because it puffs up, and as it rises, it's made it spill over. So very little oil is what you need. Now I know. What can you do when you live on a boat? <laughs> Got wine. It's mine. What is it? I think it's pretty good. You might have seen at the beginning that we had to pump up the dink before heading out. And that's because we got a leak in her. So it's time to fix her up. Travis was able to spot our leak by eyeballing it while the dinghy was in the water when he was snorkeling. But if you're having a hard time finding exactly where the leak is, a little trick would be to spray some soapy water on it to see where it bubbles up. Yeah. Okay. That little guy's the culprit. Luckily, it wasn't on a part of the tube where we'd have to remove the dinghy chaps because when Travis was winging the chaps, he didn't make it so that they're removable. <laughs> so they're stuck on there. They are removable. Just, I would have to re-sew on all these little black thread bits. I would have to cut them off and then re-sew them on. So, removable, just a lot of work. So I'm glad it's it's on the bottom of the tube. But yeah. We might as well do a leak test on all the seams. We're gonna pump a bunch of air into it and just spritz all the areas that I think might be a problem with soapy water and we'll see if it bubbles up because now would be the time to fix it. What are you doing? Wiping it down with some acetone to make sure that it's dry. I think that's good. Thoroughly clean? I believe so. I really don't want to put a patch that size on it. Don't think it's necessary. No, just gonna cut a smaller patch. You want it just to dry a little bit so that it has a good contact point, and then you re glue it apparently. No you can do it on the dinghy too. Yesterday evening we finished applying the patch just before the sun went down and we've left it to dry according to the directions on the tube of glue that we got. It said that we're supposed to wait 24 hours before inflating the tube and wait a further 48 hours before putting the dinghy into the water. I personally don't see us waiting three whole days before we get to shore because our dinghy is the way that we get to shore. We're just impatient and we don't want to be stuck on the boat. <laughs> I mean, we have paddle boards, but I don't see us paddling to shore just because of the distance that we're anchored from it, as well as the wind, how wavy it's been, and it's just not practical if we want to keep dry 
and bring anything with us or bring anything back from land to the boat. So without our dinghy, we're stuck on our boat. I'm pretty sure though that Travis has inflated the tube already, even though it hasn't been 24 hours. And we always refer to our dinghy as the dinghy because we just haven't named it yet. I don't know why we haven't named our dinghy. Maybe because we just haven't had any creative names jump out at us wanting to name it. So if you guys have any suggestions on any sort of fun, creative names for the dinghy, let us know. I did see one the other day when we were parked at a dinghy dock and the dinghy was called the car. And I thought that that was just so clever because it really is our car. I remember when we were on Land Life and we first bought the dinghy, we would take it around on the weekend and we'd go out for like four hours just going around Lake Ontario and just having fun on it, being on the water. Or we would put it on the back of Travis's truck and we'd drive up north to cottage country and just rip around the lakes there and go exploring. And we would have conversations between us talking about how, you know, when we set sail, this is going to be our car. This is going to be our main method of transportation. It's going to be how we get our groceries and get everything done. And it was such a wild thought back then, but now it's just second nature. And it is our 24 seven convertible. <laughs> Pretty sure we're going to drop it in the water today. We are not listening to the instructions at all. And hopefully the patch stays on. It's a very little patch. So hopefully the glue has cured enough that it's not going to be detrimental. Inflating and putting it in water sooner than recommended. But we'll see. Yeah, I know we have a few things to get done. We'll let you guys know if it holds up and hopefully it does. Really, really. Mm -hmm. Why sometimes you don't want to stay on the boat, right, Eager Beaver? Yeah. Get off. Update on the dinghy status. She floats and she hasn't sunk in yet and she still holds air. I was a little skeptical about the glue because it was just like some cheap glue off the shelf and uh, just clamped it down. It worked. So we're happy. I did not want any sort of dinghy trouble because once you get one leak, they all start. But well, we still wanted it off the boat and we didn't want to wait three days. <laughs> yeah, we wanted to get off the boat, so we tested it early and it worked. Thanks for watching and for all your support. We'll be spending a bit of time here getting Gypsy all prepped for the next leg of our big adventure. We're super excited to bring you guys along, so make sure you subscribe, stay tuned, and we'll see you next Friday. Our leak by what? Okay, Up. It's fighting. And like Steph says, help us by subscribing and probably look really awkward doing this. <laughs> Thanks for watching and for all your support. We'll be spending a bit of bear, please.